In this video, we're going to have a look at how to find an angle within the context of a circle. Now, there are a few things that you need to be aware of when you are dealing with these kinds of questions. The first is that when you have a line that touches a circle at just the one point, like we have here, that line is what's called a tangent to a circle. And you need to know that wherever a tangent meets a circle's radius or diameter, that you always find a right angle formed. Okay, they meet at 90 degrees. That's when you have a tangent to a circle. So whenever you see a tangent, you should identify that that angle is going to be a right angle if it meets uh, or where it meets the, the radius of the circle. Another thing you've got to be aware of is triangles within semicircles. Okay, now you can see there that you have a triangle within a semicircle. There's your semicircle there and you have a triangle within it. Now wherever you see a triangle within a semicircle, what you always end up with is a right angled triangle. And the right angle is always directly opposite the triangle's hypotenuse, okay? Or the circle's diameter, if you like. So triangle within a semicircle is always right angled. That is something that you need to be aware of. A third thing that you need to watch out for is where you have an isosceles triangle inside a circle. Now that is a triangle which is made up of two radii. You can see that this side here and this side here, that they are both radii and you should know that that is an isosceles triangle. So not only are the two sides the same length, but the two angles are going to be the same length as well. So these two angles will be the same. So these three facts are things that you need to bear in mind whenever you tackle these questions. So let's have a look at a few examples, okay? So in this question, what we've got is you can see that you've got a diameter uh, meeting a circle's tangent. And we know where that occurs, that you have an angle of 90 degrees formed. So we know that this angle here is going to be 90 degrees. Now, this angle here has to partner with 51 to give you a uh, your 90 degrees. So we can see here that this angle must be uh, 39. Okay, so 39 and 51 are going to make uh, your angle of 90 degrees. Now something else you should spot is that what you've got here is a triangle inside a semicircle. Okay, you've got a triangle inside a semicircle. So wherever that occurs, the triangle is always right angled. So what you've got now is a triangle, and you know two of its angles, and you're asked to find the third. And because you know that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180, you just take away the sum total of the two that you've got, and 39 and 90, that makes 1, 2, 9. And then working that out, you get that the angle you're looking for is 51 degrees. Okay? Let's have a look at another example. This time again, you've got a tangent, and you have the tangent meeting uh, a radius there. So you know that this angle here is going to be 90. Okay. Now, what pairs up with 70 to give you 90? That's going to be 30. So we know that in here we have an angle of 30 degrees. Now, what you're asked to do is find the size of angle X. Okay. Now, unless you spot this, you won't be able to go any further. But you should all identify that uh, this here is a radius and this here is a radius. So the red triangle is isosceles. So that means not only are two of the sides the same, but two of the angles are the same as well. So this side, this angle is going to be 30 degrees as well. So again, here we are at the same stage as we were uh, last time. You've got a triangle, you know two of the angles, and you're asked to find the third angle, the missing angle. So we say x is 180 minus, now the two angles you're given come to a total of 60. So our angle x must be 120 degrees. Okay? And that's that one done. Let's have a look at this question. Now, this time you're asked again to find x, and you have this scenario facing you. Now let's see what we know. Well, we know that we have uh, a tangent coming along here, and you know that that tangent meets uh, a radius. So you know that um, this is going to be 90 degrees. 
And because these two angles have to add up to make 90, you know that this is going to be 35 degrees. Okay. What else do we know? Well, we can see that uh, that's a radius and that's a radius. So this triangle here is going to be isosceles. So you know that that's going to be 55 degrees. Okay. And you know that these three angles have to add up to 180. So at the moment, these two add up to 110. So this must be 70 degrees. Okay. And now, if you just kind of declutter this triangle, let's just throw it out again. What do we know? We know that's 90. We know that's 70. And we're asked to find angle X. So if you just declutter all, the, all, all this stuff and just focus on what we've got here, then we can easily work out what X is going to be. And X is going to be, now you know all three angles add up to 180. The two you've got add up to 160. So your answer is going to be 20 degrees. Okay, angle X is going to be 20 degrees. Now, here's a couple for you to try yourselves. So have a go at each one, press pause, and then check back and see if what you've got is what we've got. Okay? So let's get rid of that just now down there, and let's have a look at this first one. Now, we're asked to find X again, so let's see what we know. Now, we can see that that's a tangent, that's a radius, so we know that this angle here is going to be 90 degrees. Now we know that these two angles have to add up to give you 90, so we know that this is going to be 15, okay? So we know that angle there is going to be 15, because it pairs with 75 to give you 90. Something else I want you to notice is that that's a radius, that's a radius. So that triangle there is going to be isosceles, okay? That means it's going to have two angles the same, okay? So. Uh, if that's 15, then this also is going to be 15 degrees. So all I need to do to work out angle X is to just say, well, angle X is going to be 180 minus the sum total of the two angles I've got, which is 30. So we get an answer of 150 degrees. That's angle X. Okay? And that's you. Let's have a look at this second one, and let's see what we can see. Um, so, what you notice here is that you have a triangle inside a semicircle, all right? And we know that such triangles are right angles. So you know that's going to be 90. Now, because all three angles add up here in this triangle to give you 180, we can say that this angle is going to be 50, because 50 plus 40 plus 90 gives you 180. Now, what else can we see? Well, we can see that um, this, uh, this line here is a tangent, and that that there is a radius. So where these two meet, you're going to have a right angle. Okay, so that's going to be right angled. And... I need to, in order to get x, I need to work out this angle here. Now, you can see there that that line is parallel to that line. So by alternate angles, you can spot the z shape there, if you like. So you know that the angle I am looking for is going to be 50 degrees as well. Okay, it's going to be 50 degrees as well. So we'll write that down. And then you've got all the information you need. Um, 50 and 90, that's going to make 140. So x is going to be 180 minus 140, because again, the sum of all three angles has to be 180, and you get an answer that angle x is 40 degrees. Okay, so that's how you would maybe tackle um, questions where you've been asked to find angles within the context of circles. Keep your eyes peeled for tangents, isosceles triangles, and triangles within semicircles and the rest should be reasonably straightforward, okay? So I hope that was helpful.